Okay, so yet another lecture. So this week we are moving into our third unit and this one is a longer unit and we are really gonna take our time with this one. That's why I'm breaking it down and you're only focusing on one module today. And we actually aren't even going to get through the, entire, the entirety of module nine just because it is such an important one. Um, and again, we're going to take our time with this and we're really going to break down a lot of these like very scientific and technical terms. So it's okay if you don't totally understand this right now, we're going to practice it and we're going to try to get better with it um, as time goes on. So again, you're getting a lot of scientific terminology right now, but it's okay if you don't fully understand it, we're going to go, we're going to go through it. All right. So I, a lot of times I can lecture about these things and I can give you kind of the lowdown and try to make it easier to understand. But when it comes to these scientific terms, especially in this unit, which is all about the brain and all about our body and the different processes that are going on in it, I'm, I'm not a scientist, right? I, I teach psychology, but I am also, uh, I'm a social studies teacher. And this isn't my, the area where I'm best in explaining myself. And I know that. So sometimes I'm going to throw in crash course videos and, um, the guy who there's a whole like unit on these, and he does a really great job breaking down the like more difficult, um, chemical and like biological processes that are going on in the body. So first make sure you watch this video. I'm not going to play it right now, but it really will help. It will help you understand, um, the actual, like what this module is talking about in terms of all these very technical sciencey terms. So you're just watching the first four minutes and 30 seconds. We'll actually watch the rest of it next week, but watch that and it'll kind of introduce the key ideas. So you're here now you're watching this video. Um, so this module nine is kind of the introduction to this unit that's all about is called the biological bases of like psychological understanding. So it's all about what's going on inside of our body. And you might be thinking, well, why are we talking about this? I, I learned a lot about this in, in living environment. So why are we studying biology and psychology, right? Psychology is about the behaviors that we do as humans. Well, if you remember from back earlier, um, when we first started with module one, the reasons we do things, um, there it's a mixture of things. Part of it's because of the way that we're influenced by the things going on around us. But a lot of it is because of what's actually going on inside of us. So we have to understand the processes that are happening. So when we can understand the structures and the functions of the different parts of our brain and our body, we can better understand why a person's doing what they're doing as well as their thoughts. And it really, um, it, it helps us understand why they're changing or why they might be showing abnormal or typical um, behaviors and development. So in this unit, we're really going to get into um, all the different parts of kind of like the human system. We're going to be talking about the brain. We're going to be talking about like the nervous system, right? We're also going to be talking about the different like how that's broken down. And we're going to be talking about how neurons communicate and how there are neurotransmitters in our brain that affect how we remember things or how we feel happy or not so happy. So there's lots of different things going on in this unit. Um, but it, I promise, even though it's really sciencey, it's super fascinating. The brain is the coolest thing. It is it has the ability to rebuild itself. You can live with only half a brain and still be okay. Like that's how cool this is. So we're really going to get into a lot of the like specific parts of the brain. And I hope you find it interesting as well. So before we get to like the different parts of the brain and what they do and like what happens when they're damaged, we have to understand what the building blocks of the nervous system, AKA the, Part that our brain is in. And that is, and those are, sorry, our neurons. So neurons are the building blocks of the nervous system, just kind of like how atoms are like the building block of like life, right? <laughs> I'm saying science things that I don't even know from, sorry. Uh, but the neurons are what make up, it's the reason why we're able to process things, why we're able to move, why we're able to speak. Um, neurons are, we are just a kind of a bunch of neurons. <laughs> so, um, 
to understand our thoughts, our actions, our memories, moods, all these things, we have to understand what they are and how they communicate with each other in our body because neurons are, there's millions of them and they are constantly going. The reason why I'm able to speak right now and press a button for the next slide on my computer is because neurons are firing and they're communicating with in a neuron and they're also communicating with other neurons. So we're gonna break down that process in a second. But first I just wanna talk about what a neuron looks like. So this is an image of a neuron. Um, and I remember last year, somebody was like, how do they know this is what it looks like? Like what if somebody just made this up and said, this is what it looks like? Well, psych some, certain psychologists actually study these things and they, you know, they are in a lab, they're looking through microscopes, things like that. So there is an understanding of what these look like, but these are so, 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 so small. Um, but these, this is one neuron and there's different parts to it. And you're actually going to be spending quite a bit of time in this lesson looking at the different parts of a neuron um, and understanding what they all do. But basically we have the neuron and it's made up of a couple different things. We have the cell body, um, inside we have the nucleus, right? So, so that's the cell's life support center. Um, then we have these branches here, these things that look like tree branches, and those are called dendrites, and they are receiving messages from other cells. So this is one we're going to talk about when they get messages from out here. Um, then we kind of go this way. So the way that information moves through the neuron is from this end to the other end. So we start here, we have the cell, right? And then we have the dendrites, they're getting something in. Then it's going to go this way. There is an action potential, aka a neural impulse. There's like an electrical signal that comes from here that is pushing its way down to here. And this is going through the axon. So the axon is this kind of like this part here. Um, it's the part in the middle. And it's like the long branch that's connecting this part to the end. So this is where the messages come from the cell body and they go to other neurons. So they're going through here, then they get here, and then they're going to go somewhere else to a different neuron. And this might be like they're going to um, like other neurons to communicate how to move or to communicate like um, how to process something. So an important part of outside of the axon you see here. Um, so you have the axon here in the middle, this blue part, then this kind of like clear, like layer surrounding it. That is what we call the myelin sheath, weird word. Um, but myelin sheath is it's this covering and it covers the axon of some neurons and it helps speed up the neural impulses. So they move more quickly to the end. And then they end here at the terminal branches and the terminal branches, they just form like this is where there's, they form two other different cells to communicate some other kind of message. So again, this is a lot of technical like information. And when you're reading the text, it goes way more in depth about it as well as in the crash course video. He does a really, again, a nice job of explaining what this is like and then more, I think, I think he explains it better than I do. Um, but so there's a short reading. This is actually just kind of from the textbook, but I want to go over it because I think it does the best job of explaining the difference between communication within a neuron, meaning this process, and then communication between neurons, meaning when you get here and you're going to connect to another one. So I'm just going to kind of go through this and I'm going to read it as if like I was reading this out loud and I was like stopping to kind of explain myself. So within a neuron, so within this structure here, in there, a lot of things are happening. So each neuron is itself a miniature decision-making device that performs complex calculations as it receives signals from hundreds, even thousands of other neurons. So all the time, one small teeny neuron is constantly getting information from other things. So it needs to process this information so it can get it to another place. So most signals, so again, there's like a signal, like it's like there's like a chemical, like electrical process that's happening, channeling information. So most signals are excitatory meaning um, they're like pushing a neuron's accelerator. So, right, if it's getting excited, it's getting more like revved up. 
But some are inhibitory, more like pushing its break. So some of them are like really trying to get the information really quickly. Some are trying to like slow it down and process it. If excitatory signals exceed inhibitory signals by a minimum intensity, and this is the word we're going to hear a lot, or a threshold. So when you reach like the threshold, it's like the breaking point, right? It's like, it's like that one, that teeny little point where it's like, nope, this is, I've had enough. I'm going to break. So when it reaches this threshold, that's when the signal triggers and it triggers this action potential. So the way that um, I think the book describes it is like this. So think of it as a class vote. If the excitatory people with their hands up, so like a bunch of people are like, yeah, I'm really excited. Like if I was like, okay, guys, do you want me to bake cookies or brownies? And of the 26 of you, like 18 of you are like all for the brownies. You're like, or sorry, the, the cookies, because I'm known for my cookies, right? So you're all like, yes, the cookies, the cookies. You're like jumping up and down, waving your hands. You're excited. You're really excited. And you outvote the inhibitory people. The, the brownie people are like, yeah, I like brownies. Those are cool. So you outvote them. And that's when the you send the action. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go bake my cookies then. So I then get home, go to my kitchen, do my baking, right? Bring them in the next day. So because you are so excited about this thing, it triggers the action potential. It trigger, triggers the electrical current that is going to send the message. So the action potential then travels down the axon. So again, it's like you're in the cell body. There's an action potential. It's going through the axon here. Travels down the axon, which branches into junctions with hundreds or thousands of other neurons or with the body's muscles and glands. So it goes through here. And again, it might have a myelin sheath speeding it up. And then it goes here and it reaches these, these terminal branches. And it's going to go to other places so it can communicate something. So like, let's say the action is like, you know, I see a spider on me right? Like I see the spider, I process it. And like, all of a sudden I'm feeling scared. Um, I it's, I'm processing that like the, the actions, like, and I'm like, okay, the next thing I want to do is like, get it off of me. I want to like use my hand to swat it away or whatever. So the message, the impulse, I'm like the frightened, I'm being frightened. It's getting here. And then it's going to go over to another cell that communicates to my motor neurons to hit the spider away. So that's what's going on when we get to this last paragraph. So, or actually we're gonna kind of talk about that in the next one when it jumps over that. So one thing to, that is important to understand within neurons is that when you increase the level of stimulation above the threshold, that doesn't mean it's going to be a more intense impulse, meaning it's going to be like faster or more like just more intense. Um, because the neuron's reaction is a all or none response. It either fires or it doesn't. It's like a gun. Like you either shoot the gun and it fires or you don't shoot it and it doesn't fire. It's, you know, they're obviously like, there are more, in like there are bigger guns that have a bigger impact, but with this, it either is working or it's not. So then how do we detect like whether something is a more intense or less intense stimulus then? And a stimulus being like something that is giving us like information that we're sensing. Um, so like, and for an example, like how do we distinguish that something is like a gentle touch, just like, you know, like a nice, like, you know, like a mus I think of like, like a nice gentle like massage or something from like, somebody slapping you in the face, right? So how do like, those are very different things. So a strong stimulus can trigger more neurons to fire. So that would be like, instead of like a gun fires, right? And one shot to a person or to a thing, I don't know why I'm thinking that somebody's getting shot, but like one shot to something um, is going to cause damage, right? But if you fire like a hundred shots at that thing, it's going to be way more intense. And that's what's going on with this. So the intensity of something depends on how many are fired, not how strongly it's fired. So, and it'll be like more often, right? But like exactly as it says here, sorry, I'm trying to see where I left off. So like squeezing a trigger harder won't make the bullet go faster, but when you 
fire more bullets, it is going to have more of an impact. And that's what's going on within neurons. So it's important to understand this all or none response and also the idea of the threshold. Um, these are two important ideas that um, help us understand what is going on within a neuron. So on the other hand though, when we go back to looking at this, right? So that's all what's going on from here to here. We have even thought about what happens when all of a sudden a nerve, like the information has to go to, let's say if we had another picture of this that was like next to it. So that is between neurons. So scientists used to think that the axon of one cell immediately was connected to the dendrites of another one in an in, wow, I cannot speak to it today. <laughs> I can't speak today. Uninterrupted fabric. So meaning that they thought this part right here was connected to another, like the dendrites of another one. So like if I copy and pasted this image, this end, if I were to put this picture right next to it, they would touch. Um, but they found out that's actually not true. So this British physiologist, Sir Charles Sherrington, you don't need to know who he is, but he noticed that neural impulses were taking an unexpectedly long time to travel a neural pathway. I mean, they were, they were taking a little bit longer. So inferring that there must be some sort of interruption in the transmission, he called this the meeting point between neurons, a synapse. So what he found was after the, the information gets here, it takes a little bit of a pause. There's like a gap here it like jumps over and then it connects to another one. And he calls that a synapse. So a synapse is just like a gap. Like when you're getting off the subway, there's a gap there, right? There's a gap between when you get off and the platform. And it takes a little bit of time. You don't just automatically get off the subway and you're on the platform. There's like a, a split second where you have to like cross that gap. So that's what's happening when the neurons are communicating to another neuron. So we now know that the axon terminal of one neuron is in fact separated from the receiving neuron by a synaptic gap. gap. Sometimes they call it a synaptic, synaptic cleft. Um, and this thing is really, 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 really small. It's less than one millionth of an inch wide. I can't even really picture how small that is, but it's extremely small. So when an action potential reaches the knob-like terminals at the axon's end, so it reaches those um, the end ones, it triggers the release of chemical messengers. And these chemical messengers, we're going to talk more about next week because they're really important. But these are called neurotransmitters. And we have tons of different kinds of neurotransmitters inside of us that um, they impact things like our memory and our emotions and all that kind of stuff. So within one ten thousandth of a second, again, this seems like a real amount, unreal amount of time, but a very short amount of time, the neurotransmitter molecules, they cross the synaptic gap. So they cross a teeny little gap really quickly and they bind to a receptor sites on the receiving neuron. So they go to the next one and they fit perfectly. They fit like a key fits in a lock. So for an instant, instant, the neurotransmitter unlocks tiny channels at the receiving site and ions flow in, exciting or inhibiting the receiving neuron's readiness to fire, kind of like what they happened in the last one. Then in a process called reuptake, the sending neuron reabsorbs the excess neurotransmitters. So there's, that's again, a lot of sciencey information, but the biggest thing to know is that there is this small little gap that the information crosses and when it does, it releases this, these things called neurotransmitters that communicate some kind of message to something else that says, this is how you should be feeling or acting now. So that is our quick introduction to neurons and neurotransmitters and how they communicate. And again, this is kind of complicated info and we're gonna go over it more next week and we're gonna review it, but be sure to watch the, um, the crash course video and then to, um, as you're doing this, make sure that you are also answering the, um, the guided notes on your worksheet. So that is it for this week um, in terms of lectures. And let me know if you have any questions.